where exactly are the Ukrainians going to use those cluster bombs? They're not going to use them, from what I understand, on Russian territory. They're going to use them on U the Ukrainian territories that are currently under the control of the Russian army. What it means is that actually they would be using those bombs. <clears throat> and if they're going to kill any civilians, they're going to be killing Ukrainian civilians. Actually, I think that makes a big difference because it's not in the interest of the Ukrainians to use the technology that will kill their own civilians. Now, in a controversial decision, the White House has confirmed it's going to send cluster munitions to Ukraine, the bombs which explode in midair and catapult bomblets over a wide area, are banned by over 100 countries because of the danger they pose to civilians. The National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan has been explaining the US's decision. We recognise that cluster munitions create a risk of civilian harm from unexploded ordnance. This is why we've the defer deferred the decision for as long as we could. But there is also a massive risk of civilian harm if Russian troops and tanks roll over Ukrainian positions and take more Ukrainian territory and subjugate more Ukrainian civilians because Ukraine does not have enough artillery. That is intolerable to us. Ukraine would not be using these munitions in some foreign land. This is their country they're defending. These are their citizens they're protecting. Jake Sullivan, the National Security Advisor, uh, explaining the US's decision there. Now, the Ukrainian MP Kira Ruddock has been defending this decision on Times Radio Breakfast because US cluster bombs are more accurate than the ones Russia is using. The cluster munitions that Russians are using against us have the uh, unexplosiveness rate as 40%. So basically like around a half, right? And the ones that we requested from the United States uh, have the unexplosives rate less than 2%. And they have proven to be very effective and something that our military commanders requested. The Ukrainian MP Kira Ruddick there. Is the argument that Russia uses this military warfare, so Ukraine should too, morally defensible? How do you decide what's just in war? I'm joined by Professor Vittorio Bufaki, a senior lecturer in philosophy at University College Cork. Welcome to the programme. Hello, Ria. What do you make of this decision from a philosophical perspective? Right, it, it is a very complex issue. Um, sometimes people think there are simple ethical answers to these questions, but there aren't. Um, so those cluster bombs have been around for a long time. They were, they were used in the Second World War. And as you rightly explained, the technology such that um, when they explode, you have hundreds of smaller bomblets that are um, let out uh, and scattered. Um, from, an, from an ethical point of view, there are two separate issues. One is the fact that those bomblets are scattered indiscriminately. Um, you cannot control where they go. They cover a large area. The fact that it's indiscriminate um, from an ethical point of view, that's kind of meaningful because obviously it increases the risk that civilians will be killed. And if we start from the assumption that killing civilians is wrong in war, then any technology um, that increases the risk to civilians is wrong. Um, the opposite of, the, of this scattered, indiscriminate um, scatter bombs would be the smart bombs um, that were first introduced in 1991. And these are laser guided bombs. And the idea is that they're smart because they only hit uh, the targets that you intend. The other issue um, is the fact that a lot of those bomblets that are, that are um, uh, let out, um, they do not always uh, detonate. And that's the other point that was made in, in your introduction. And those become, uh, they're called duds. So those unexploded bombs um, can be compared to landmines. Um, they can lie there for a very long time and then they go off um, <clears throat> even years later. And of course, again, there's a risk to civilians. And if we start from the assumption that landmines are wrong, then uh, cluster bombs are wrong. Now, having said all that, actually, um, it gets much more complicated because if we assume with the first issue that it is wrong because it's indiscriminate. Um, now, 
That's true. And then we compared them to the smart bombs. Now, um, smart bombs are not as smart as we like to think. They're actually um, fairly stupid bombs. Um, when, they when they were first introduced, um, their success rate was 50%. And they were sold to us as this is the ethical way of conducting ourselves in war. Um, yes, you know, we have the intention of hitting certain targets. And if the technology fails, that was not our intention. So morally speaking, we are okay. Well, not really. Um, now that technology has improved, but you still have at best 90% um, of smart bombs hitting the targets. You still have 10% that hits um, anywhere, right? So <clears throat> indiscriminate versus uh, targeted, it's it's not, it's not that clear cut. But then the second point, with, I think it's actually more important. The fact that we compare um, cluster bombs to landmines, right? Now, um, in the introduction, um, the point was made um, about the percentage of the bombs that are unexploded. And it is claimed that the Russians use a type of, of uh, cluster bomb whereby 40% of the bomblets um, do not explode on impact. The average, we're told, is around 20%. Um, now, the Pentagon has actually issued slightly contradictory uh, information about the type of um, cluster bomb that has been sent to the Ukraine. Because in, in, in one document, it says that only two to three percent of those bombs fail to explode, so they are as safe as they can be. But then there's not that document that says that it's um, forty percent of those bombs that do not explode. So, of course, you know who are we to believe? Because I mean, all this um, the statistics on um, how successful uh, those bombs are, technologically speaking, I mean, they come from the sources that are actually uh, putting those, those bombs into use. Mm. Um, so so, so it, is, it is problematic. Having said that, from an ethical point of view, given the difficulty here, because, because one can only make an ethical, ethical decision based on um, accurate information that we have. And I'm not sure how accurate the information is mm. uh, regarding how many bombs uh, explode or do not explode. As yeah, well, so. yeah, fair point. The thing is, I would imagine for any uh, one uh, Ukrainians listening to this program on the uh, 500th day of, of war in their country, the academic arguments about the rights and wrongs of using certain types of military uh, equipment will pale in comparison to the need to end this war. Is there ever an argument that the, the end justifies the means? Um, the end justifies the means can, can be interpreted in many different ways, but you're absolutely right, because in terms of understanding the ethics of war, um, there are two questions. One is, when is it ethically acceptable, morally speaking, to go into war? And then there's the conduct of yourself during the war. In terms of the first question, which, I, which is possibly the most important question in the ethics of war, um, this is as close um, as, as, as as close to a, a, um, <clears throat> to a definitive answers that we can have. Um, the Russians are in the wrong because they invaded Ukraine, and Ukraine is only into this war as an act of self defense. So, ethically speaking, the Ukrainians here have a right to defend themselves. Mm. And that is the most important issue here. Now, how far can you go in your self-defense? Um, it has to be proportionate um, to what you um, are facing. So the question of proportionality is important, um, but so far we haven't seen any indication that Ukraine is taking advantage of this war in order to um, take more land from Russia. Absolutely mm. not. The, all they want to do is reclaim their land. We're not talking about on, like for like here. That's right, but on the cluster bomb, and this is, I think, possibly the most interesting ethical issue, which I haven't seen um, anyone discussing. 
where exactly are the Ukrainians going to use those cluster bombs? They're not going to use them, from what I understand, on Russian territory. They're going to use them on U the Ukrainian territories that are currently under the control of the Russian army. What it means is that actually they would be using those bombs. <clears throat> and if they're going to kill any civilians, they're going to be killing Ukrainian civilians. Actually, I think that makes a big difference because it's not in the interest of the Ukrainians to use the technology that will kill their own civilians. And actually, we have to take that into account. So ethically speaking, it is clearly not their intention. And if they're going to use the cluster bombs, they're going to use them in such a way that will minimize the harm to civilians. Mm. And minimizing the harm to civilians is the best you can do from an ethical point of view in terms of just war theory. Yeah. So all the literature on cluster bombs has always been on the idea that you're using those bombs in the territory of your enemy. That's not the case in the, here in Ukraine. Yeah, a very different picture here. Listen, we'll have to leave it there, but fascinating insight. And thank you for joining us for the programme. Professor Vittori uh, Bufaki, a senior lecturer in philosophy at the University College Cork, considering the ethical implications of Ukraine using these US-supplied cluster bombs.